So in the last lectures, we've talked about finding the maximum and minimum values of functions, but in a very abstract sense. Like we've just kind of picked functions and said, okay, where are these high and low points? In the next couple of lectures, we're, we're going to take this in a more practical direction. We're going to look at, at kind of real world scenarios and see how we can find values that either maximize or minimize certain parameters. For example, um, we might want to maximize revenue, we might want to minimize costs, we might want to maximize the area of an enclosure, we might want to minimize the, the cost of an enclosure while at the same time maximizing its area. So those are the kind of questions we're talking about. And, and these, uh, just in, in broad terms, these are called optimization problems. And I have kind of a, a, a general outline of how we're going to do this. First, we're, uh, we're going to write a function that describes the situation uh, with, with an eye towards coming up with something that we can differentiate and, and use our, our first and second derivative tests to find its maximum and minimum values. So step two is going to be find the domain of the function. And these, these are practical problems we're talking about. So, for example, our, our domains are often going to be restricted to only positive numbers. For example, you can't uh, produce a negative number of units or have the ne a negative width um, to a product or, or a building. Then, assuming that the domain is a closed interval, which, which, a lot of, which often it's going to be, we're going to use the techniques that we developed back at the beginning of this chapter to find the absolute maximum or minimum, or whichever one we're being asked to find. Okay, let's got a just very basic example for us to start with. We have a daycare owner, and they want a fence in a playground. And they have 500 feet of fencing to do this. And we want to find the dimensions that maximize the playground's area. Which the playground, it's, it's going to be a rectangle, right? So let, let me sketch this here, right? We have a rectangle, and the rectangle has a length and a width. And what do I know? Uh, what, what am I trying to optimize? I, I want to maximize the playground's area. Okay, so the area of a rectangle is the length times the width. Now, this is the one we need to be focused on, right? Because this is the one that, that we're being asked to maximize. So I need to be able to take the derivative of this thing. And as it stands right now, I can't because it's got one too many variables. There are things we can do when a, when a function has more than one variable in it, but that's for third semester calculus down the road. So what I need to do is I need to eliminate one of them. And here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to use this other piece of information. We have 500 feet of fencing. Okay, so in other words, I know the perimeter of this thing is going to be 500 feet. But what's the perimeter? The perimeter is twice the length plus twice the width. Okay. Excellent. Now, now, now I'm, I'm, I'm in good shape because here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this equation. I'm going to solve it for L. All right, so if I do that, let's start dividing both sides by 2. Length plus width equals 250, which means length is equal to 250 minus W. All right. Now, take that, substitute it into the original equation, into the area equation. Area equals 250 minus W times W. That's what I needed. Now we're down to a function with just one variable. All right, so let, let's simplify this. The area is 250W minus W squared. And now I can find the derivative of this thing. A prime equals... 250 minus 2w. All right, well, let's do what we do, right? I'm, I'm trying to find an extrema here. So let's set this equal to 0. 250 minus 2w 
equals zero. And I'll solve this for W. 2W equals 250. W equals 125. Okay, now, um, it, it's W that, that, that I'm working with here, right? So remember, I, I said we need to think about domains because we're, we're treating this as an absolute extremal problem. So what is the domain of this function? Well, W has to be between zero, right? That's um, the theoretical smalls. Obviously, we're, we're, that's not going to be our answer, but that, that is the minimum value. And what is the maximum value? Well, look over here. All right, the maximum value of W is going to occur when L is at a minimum. The minimum value for L is zero. All right, so in that case, W is going to be 250. Okay. Excellent. Now let, let's take these numbers and put them into our area formula. W area, and this area is a function of W now, right? So we'll call it A of W. And I'm going to check 0, 250, and 125. Right? If I put 0 into the, my area formula, remember what I'm talking about. That's this formula right here. If I put zero into there for W, the area is zero. If I put 250 into there, the area is zero. Okay, excellent. That's what I wanted to see, right? If I put 125 into there, 250 minus 125 is 125, right? So that's 125 squared, which is 15,000. 625 that is my maximum area right so uh but we, have, we haven't asked the question yet right i know that i was asked for the dimensions the dimensions are going to be 125 that's the width uh what are we measuring in feet right 125 feet so what will the length be well take this just put it back into here the length is going to be 250 minus 125, which is 125. So it's 125 feet by 125 feet. It's going to be a square, right? It'll be a square playground. Okay, so again, let, let's take a step back, right? Um, wh what was my thinking here? What were we asked to maximize? We were asked to maximize the area. So that immediately tells me, okay, I'm going to need a formula for the area. That's the function I was talking about in step one in, in my list of steps. All right, then once I've got that, I said, okay, it's got too many variables. What other information do I have that can let me reduce this from two variables down to one? All right, once I had done that, then it, it really turned into a pure calculus problem. We use our procedure for finding the absolute extrema. Okay, so this function here, uh, not function, this formula here, right? It's got a name. It's called the constraint. Right? The constraint is the thing that we use to reduce the number of variables in the equation that we're actually trying to maximize or minimize. All right, so let's, let's see if we can generalize this, right? If two variables have a constant sum, x plus y equals c thinking back to my to our last example we had this right we had length plus width equals 250 right that was our constraint the, the sum of the two variables is constant then what is the maximum value of their product and that was our area right our area was the two variables multiplied together length times width so let's see if we can do this in general now. Are, are we always going to get um, a square as our final answer? I'm going to do exactly what I did before. The product is x, y, 
and I want to maximize this. And to do that, I'm going to eliminate a variable. I'm going to come up here and say y is equal to c minus x. And let's substitute that. I get p is equal to x times c minus x. That's cx minus x squared. I'll find the derivative. p prime is c minus 2x. And if we set that equal to 0, minus 2x equals minus c. So x is c divided by 2. And what will be the corresponding value of y? Well, again, we, we know from up at the top there, y equals c minus x. Well, x is c over 2. And that is c over 2. So yeah, it is. Right? In this situation, um, we're always going to get this square. X and Y are going to be equal to each other, and they're going to be equal to half of that constant, whatever it is. Okay, so now, now I'm doing the same thing, but I'm going the other way. Right now I'm saying, well, look, what if the product is a constant instead of the sum? All right, so I'm saying if the product is constant, I want to know what is the minimum value of the sum. So I've kind of turned it around now, right? But look, the process is going to be the same. I'm going to let the sum s equal x plus y. And then I'm going to solve this, this constraint, x, y equals c, for y. You could solve it for x. It doesn't matter. Right? So solve it for 1. And then we'll go back and use it to calculate the other. So I'm going to say that y equals c divided by x. And if I substitute that in here, this becomes x plus c x to the negative first. I don't want to take the derivative, right? So if I make that into a negative exponent, we can just use our power rule. So then s prime equals 1 minus c x to the negative second and to solve uh, right i'm going to set this equal to zero one minus c x to the negative second equals zero uh move the one over minus c x to the negative second is negative one which means let's see one Oh, I'm going to do two things at once. Divide both sides by minus c. So the right-hand side becomes 1 over c. And I'm going to make that x to the negative second into 1 over x squared. All right, so let's see. Uh, solve this. Just cross-multiply. x squared equals c. x equals the square root of c. Uh, could be minus the square root of c. Again, we're, we're talking mostly about practical problems here. So generally speaking, we're going to want our results to be positive. Um, okay, so then what's y? I will substitute that into the y formula up there. y equals c divided by the square root of c, which is the square root of c. And look at that, we got a square again, right? Once again, it, it came out to be a square. Only this time, because we're talking about a product instead of a sum, we used a square root instead of dividing by 2, instead of division to get um, that optimum pair of values. All right, so let, let's look at the situation here. Right, we have uh, another kind of practical question. All right, a fence must be built to enclose a rectangular area of 40,000 square feet. So this time, instead of knowing the perimeter, instead of the perimeter being constant, the area is going to be constant. So x, y equals 40. One, two, three, forty thousand. I want to minimize the amount of fencing required. Okay, well, how much fencing is required? That's the perimeter, right? The amount of fencing required is two x plus two y. Okay, so what what is this then? This is two times x plus y. All right, so now I know what I'm trying to do, right? I'm trying to, that that two out in front. If I if I minimize x plus y, 
then I've also minimized 2x plus y. Right, so that, that constant out front isn't going to bother me. So this exactly matches my previous situation um, that, that we did in general. This was the value of C. And remember what our result was. Our result was the optimal value occurs when X equals Y equals the square root of C. That's the square root of 40,000, which is 200. Right, so first, check that real quick. If both dimensions are 200, then I do have the required area. Right, it does come out to 40,000. Right, and the the perimeter, we weren't we weren't asked for this, but the perimeter would be um, 200, uh, 2 times 200 plus 200. That would be what uh, 2 plus 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. Would be 8,000. Feet, but that wasn't the question. The question was what were the dimensions that minimize uh, the amount of fencing required. That would be 200 feet by 200 feet. Okay, that's the basic idea, right? That's the basic idea. We, we saw some nice general results, all right? Um, in the next lecture, we're going to look at some more complicated ones, uh, things involving costs, for example. Uh, we're we're going to have constraints on the size of, of an object. And we know how much it costs to produce it, uh, and we want to minimize or uh, to minimize that cost.